My name is Brain of Terror, and I'm an NSO with Dublin Roller Derby. As for earlier in this year, I'm also one of the several people who developed and maintained each CRG scoreboard that you probably use as a scoreboard for Roller Derby. So last week, uh, version 395 of the scoreboard came out, uh, with many fixes and improvements we've made over the last month, few months, so I'd just like to go through them with you. The first one to be aware of is that the lag issues are completely gone. Now if you start a stopper jam, it will always be instant, as it should be. The next one's a quality of life thing. When you start up the scoreboard, there will always be a black and a white team, because that's what you probably need for scrimmage, black v white, and uh, that gets things going rather than having to go and create those teams by hand. Uh, another quality of life improvement in media management, even though there's currently no sponsor banners, you can now upload some. So this means it can all be done via the UI rather than having to mess around with stuff on disk. Uh, something else which has bitten me many times uh, is that if you have, say, the speed score controls that are hidden, so Q is set up there, and I press Q, it still works. So that's kind of handy. Um, another thing, now this is not from 395, but it is from the 39 series. If you're in a jam, then you go to a timeout, you can now go directly to lineup from the timeout just by pressing the stop jam slash timeout button. And this is completely supported by the scoreboard and won't cause any problems. Uh, something else to be aware of is that policies are gone. Uh, policies are currently in rule sets. They've all been moved there, but this will move around further as we continue to clean this up. There are several bugs you might have noticed as a scoreboard operator, which are now fixed as well. Uh, unstop, jam, and so on have all been changed to a snapshot system, so they're all much more reliable, so those edge cases like period end handled much better. Uh, star passes in the box button didn't work too well. That's all fine. Sometimes the period number and jam numbers could get messed up um, around the end of period, that's all fixed. And there's also an issue where you could actually lock up the scoreboard if you tried to go into overtime at exactly the wrong time. Now, penalties have had quite a bit of work done to them. So I have cheated and preloaded some skaters in here so you can see them. Uh, the first thing to be aware of is that penalties are now persisted across a restart of the scoreboard. So you don't have to worry about losing them. They're saved every 10 seconds, just like everything else. Uh, the penalty codes here, these are coming from a file now, so whenever there are the next set of penalties, you won't have to wait for a scoreboard release for them to be used. If I go and put in some current skaters, so one, two, six, you will see that the current skaters are highlighted in green for the current jam, which makes things a little easier. Um, as well as that, any penalties for the current period will be bold, and if I just go in to a new jam and anything from the current jam is underlined so in, when you go into period two these will no longer be bold so this is a way to tell which penalties from where and emphasizing that in addition penalties are now sorted so if i add an illegal contact in there you'll see that the penalties are now sorted and it's also been made to be more readable on all mobile phones and tablets because that's what you're probably using also expulsions, you can now select the penalty code. And in addition, it's now read just like as if you had a foul out. Uh, in addition to that, there were issues around gaps and around not handling a case where a skater number was changed. And those have also been fixed. Something else is this uh, display has been updated to handle 15 skaters on a roster. Uh, in the lineup view, this has been reorganized a bit, so now the numbers are how it's sorted, and the ordering of all these columns is better. Uh, it just makes more sense generally. In the mobile or jam timer control, there is now an option for official reviews, which was not there presently, previously. The WebSocket scoreboard uh, now supports colors, which wasn't supported previously. And you'll notice that on both this and the other scoreboard, that 
The background is now completely black by default, which works much better on projectors. In general, you might also notice this new custom screens thing. What this is, is a directory HTML custom that you can drop your broadcast overlays, or whatever the custom screens you have. And the thing is, they'll be then clickable from here, so you don't have to remember the exact URL. So that's something for more advanced users. Uh, also, historically, the scoreboard repository uh, had a whole pile of rather old team logos. We have removed those and will no longer be distributing them. Uh, other changes, which are a bit more in the back end, is that the wiki, which I'll link from the description of this video, has had a whole pile of new information added to it, which would make your life a lot easier. Um, in addition, in the back end, the game JSON file for stats is now gone. It has been replaced by something instead using the WebSocket, the exact same as the system uses here, which is documented. It's also persisted across restarts, which wasn't previous, and it's all automatic. Uh, so that's all much nicer. And um, hopefully things like the, the uh, stats workbook to conversion tools will be updated for all that because uh, we got the blessing from that. Um, as well, the website is a heartbeat to deal with situations where it didn't reconnect the penalty views. Uh, internally as well, the a lot of the handling of all the clocks was very racy. Um, so weird stuff could happen. So that's substantially less racy now because I've got a more synchronous system and simpler clock handling. And in fact, it didn't make into 395, but in the current master, which will be in the next release, we've made it completely synchronous, so race conditions will be gone forever. Uh, as well, in just terms of software engineering, uh, for the first time ever, we now have unit tests inside uh, CRG, which wasn't there previously. And this means we've caught lots of bugs and it gives us the knowledge that you know we're probably not breaking something where we're doing changes like adding in snapshots and so on and it's enabled us to make a lot of improvements to the scoreboard we've also eliminated all the compiler warnings and now have continuous integration as well and uh, one thing to be aware of is that java 1.7 is required as of this release although per our survey everyone is on at least 1.7 most people are on 1.8 or newer so all these changes, like this scoreboard has been actively developed and 395 is mostly just get a release out there with all these fixes and improvements, especially the lag fix. It is recommended you upgrade to 395 and the next release when that comes out too. And all this work was done by a whole pile of people across the world. There was a speedy convalesce from the Delta Quads in Germany, official sounding from Assassination City Royal Derby in the US, Adam Smasher from Lansing Derby Vixens in the US, Rogzilla of Garden State Roller Girls in the US, and myself, Brain of Terror of Dublin Roller Derby in Ireland, and also Riff Ref of Dublin Roller Derby in Ireland. So I hope you find the new scoreboard useful. Go ahead and try it out.